everybody. Hello, everybody. We're getting closer to Yom Kippur. I hope you, that uh, all of you had a beautiful Rosh Hashanah. And we are in the beginning of the new year. And the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are also very, very powerful. We know that there are exactly 10 days from Rosh Hashanah, including all the way to Yom Kippur, including 10 days. It's a connection to the Tree of Life and the spheres. Every day is represented by a different one. When the highest of highest is Keter, the crown, and that comes on the 10th which is Yom Kippur. So Yom Kippur is always on the 10th of the Hebrew month of Tishrei. And it's a very special day. It's actually considered the happiest day. And it's a very, very spiritual and powerful day. In Judaism, the days starts in the sundown all the way till sundown. They don't start in the morning, they start in the evening. And that's why Yom Kippur, we have um, the whole you know, process of purification and the celebration is for 25 hours. And every year we have to check exactly the dates because the Jewish calendar is very accurate, but the English calendar is less. So we have to check every year. This year it falls on Wednesday after sundown all the way till Thursday after nightfall and this day is also a fast day we have five prohibitions that we're not allowed to do on Yom Kippur and number one we're not allowed to drink or to eat number two we're not wearing leather shoes there's reasons of course for each one of them number three no washing you're not allowed to wash. Of course, you wash before uh, Yom Kippur, but you're not allowed to wash yourself during Yom Kippur. Um, no body lotions or oils, no perfumes. Uh, you can have the oil around. <laughs> and um, no marital relations. So those are the five prohibitions. And again, it's 25 hours. It's challenging but we can do it. And not only we can do it, it's a very big mitzvah to eat on the day of, you know, that in the evening it's Yom Kippur. So not just to eat, to eat extra. So when it's um, Yom Kippur's Eve, on that day from early in the morning, we should eat as much as we want, even extra, so that we won't suffer when we're fasting. Uh, right before the holiday, usually it's like an hour and a half before, we do a special meal. This one is called Seuda Mafseket. It's a feast, a big meal that we make right before the fast. Um, I encourage you to drink a lot of water and also the food that you're cooking for that special meal should not be too salty or too sweet or not too spicy because it can make you thirsty later and of course you want to make it like the optimum conditions for you to have an easy fast and those um special prohibitions there's of course reasons for all of that and maybe you can share with us a little bit so the torah tells us that in yom kippur ve'initem et nafshotechem this is a very very interesting part because the initem, if you if you translate it from Hebrew to English, you say to torture your soul. But if you go deeper into the Hebrew, the initem has a root, and the root comes from the word ani. Ani means poor. But what does it mean poor? So let's go first to the soul. The soul of the person have five parts. They're called nefesh, ruach. Neshama, Chaya, and Yechida. So the Nefesh is the lowest part of the soul of the human. And it's connected to the physical things, to everything that we need in this world, like uh, you need to eat, we need to have a lot of food to drink. 
um, we want to, all the pleasures of the body. But according to the, to the Jewish halacha, there are five things that actually torture the soul. And it's not really torture, but we'll get to that in a bit. So, as we said, drinking and eating, washing our body, putting lotions, make the, the skin feel good, uh, putting uh, perfumes, um, wearing leather shoes, and to have a sexual relationship. During Yom Kippur, in order for us to be able to elevate, we need to take away those physical things, those things that ground us to this world. And with us taking them down, we're able to lift ourselves and go up. And, have, and to have a straight connection to Sfirat Bina, to the place that all the sustenance are going to the world, and all the fulfillments that are coming from the upper worlds are coming down. And we can do that by connecting directly to upper worlds. And this is something we can do by lowering the power of the nefesh. In order to elevate ourselves to higher levels of consciousness and higher spiritual levels during Yom, during Yom Kippur, we need to strike down the lower part that is called the nefesh, that is connected to the desires, to the physical, to this world. To our body. To our body, yes. And by that we're able to connect to Bina, which is the cosmic warehouse of everything we have in the universe. All the sustenance and the fulfillments that we can get directly from higher worlds, from Sfirat Bina. And this is something that we do by striking down the powers of the nefesh, the desires, the physical. This is when we say to our body, you sit aside, it's my soul time. And the way we do that is, you'll see people that even if they don't come all year long to the synagogues, they will go on Yom Kippur, they will do their best to come. And why? If we're just going there and we're expecting to go in and out the same way, why bother? Right? If we drag ourselves with ourselves every year to the next year and the next year and the next year, why bother? People get depressed because they don't, they don't really understand how to improve their lives. And this, my friends, this has to do with spiritual work. We think that being spiritual is just to sit like under a tree and do meditation. Meditation is amazing. But to really do a spiritual work and to really change your character and your reacting nature is a very, very hard job. And even though we can all do that, it's a 24 hours job. And when we forget, and we get it one way or another, we have to go back. We should never give up. We should never stop our spiritual work. And we should always try to improve ourselves and to always ask Hashem to help us to find what is our true, you know, purpose in this world. And what our soul came to do in this world that no one else can. What our soul came to the world to do that if this soul will disappear, will not do her job. This world will miss something great. So the whole way that Yom Kippur is built, the prayers, all the order, is to help us to elevate ourselves higher and higher and higher. The prayer What's the purpose, right? Why do we go? Why do we bother to learn Hebrew, to read, to say the prayers? So the purpose of the prayer, according to the Aviza, the very big sage that lived in the city of Tzfat in the north of Israel in the 15th century, is to draw sustenance to our world from upper worlds. The prayer is very powerful. It's like opening a pipe, a spiritual pipe, that makes the bridge from our world to upper worlds. And if we do it right, we literally drag 
beautiful light sustenance love nurturing to our world and if you looked around lately our world really needs it but how do we do that so first of all when we pray we don't ask just for ourselves when i ask only for myself i limit my vessel i have to ask for myself for my family yeah it's okay to ask for your loved ones but then ask for all of israel ask for the whole world because our world needs our prayers our world needs our love everyone around us we are all one and if we're going to destroy this heaven of, on earth that was given to us as partners in this creation we're all going to suffer we're all going to suffer the illusion of being separated the illusion of thinking that if i do something to someone else it doesn't hurt me or if it hurts them it's only them no there's no real space it's illusion we're all really connected and we should all do our best to bring joy and happiness to our lives and to other people's life and it's not easy you know rabbi nachman from breslau he said that the number one disease of our generation is going to be depression depression is very very dangerous it's an actual disease people think that you know unfortunately pills can help to a certain degree but it's not really healing the whole process of what's happening inside and we're talking about young people so i don't want to take it to that direction but just so you know depression goes in when at one point or more in our lives we created a space space in the laws of spiritual physics is not a good thing because when there's a space something wants to go in so our job is to always draw light and life and love into our vessels we are vessels but if we leave space and we don't continue to feel it and work hard to be happy 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 do opposite and opposite when it's hard for us then into that space negativity will come and once it settles in it's really a big fight to get it out of there there are ways maybe you know you can write to us in the comments if if you want we can make a video about that too or we can just answer you personally you can contact us at letsjewish at gmail.com back to yom kippur yom kippur can really make the difference guys it's a day it's a portal that opens once a year and it's so powerful that it defines the laws of physics on that day do we see it with our eyes not always because the illusion of the matter in our world is so powerful so strong that it's almost impossible to see but if you do the things that you need to do in yom kippur you will feel it so yom kippur starts we talked about the prayer with the prayer kol nidrei kol nidrei is a very powerful chanting that starts on Yom Kippur's Eve and what happened in Kol Nidre is that right before we're supposed to connect and we have the opportunity to connect to the sphere of Bina we need to make sure that we cleaned all, all the um, negativity and anger that is holding us back with what? with our promises, with our vows. On Rosh Hashanah, we, we did already, you know, we, we did a prayer in the synagogues in the morning to let go of our vows and our promises. But in Yom Kippur, because of what's happening in upper worlds, we really get an opportunity to break the future negative actions that we're supposed to get for something bad that we did that's why this prayer is coming right in the beginning to help us to really cleanse all all the negative things we promise whether we remember remember them or not and to elevate ourselves and not to let any negative force to hold us back the cosmic law is a cause and effect 
whatever, whatever we did to harm someone will come back to us. But if we really understand in Yom Kippur, not just in Yom Kippur, but if we bring ourselves ready to Yom Kippur, understanding that we do not continue with the harmful you know, behavior that is harming ourselves and others, and we really do the Kol Nidre with all that Kavana intention to cleanse the bad actions and to start fresh and to go connect to Bina and to bring light and love and giving and sharing into our nature instead of our anger and pain and suffering and all the bad behaviors that we're causing, then we have the pure opportunity to break one day a year the connection between cause and effect and cancel all the negative actions that we're supposed to get this year for bad things that we did. We have a rare opportunity only once a year. During our prayers in Yom Kippur, there is a part that is called the Vidui. Vidui means to confess about things that you did, whether right now or before. We say also things that we did in past lives. We do the Vidui also during the month of Elul and in the 10th days of Tshuva between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippurim. Of course, we do that also in Yom Kippurim. There is also Vidui that we do during the year to repent for our sins. But I wanted to talk a little bit about this part during Yom Kippur. We say the Vidui in all the prayers. We have five prayers in Yom Kippur. We have the prayer of Arvit, we have the prayer of Shacharit in the morning, we have the Musaf also in the morning, later on we have Tfilat Mincha, and we have the last prayer of Yom Kippur, Tfilat Neila. In all of those prayers we say the Vidui. During um, the days of the week we have only three prayers. On Shabbat and holidays we have four prayers. Only on Yom Kippur we have five prayers. So even though we're not eating, means our body is not being fed, our soul gets extra food. Yes. And the Vidui starts like that. When we do the Vidui, we take our hand, we take the thumb, we put it inside and we close it up with the finger. And then we pound on our heart every time we say, for instance, Ashamnu. We pawn. Bagad no. Okay, I'm going to read to you a part of the Vidui and we're going to put it on our site. I'm going to put a link to it. Um, here we go. Our God and the God of our fathers, may our prayers reach thee. Do not ignore our prayers, for we are neither insolent or obstinate to say, to thee, God, our God, and the God of our fathers, we are just and have not sinned. Indeed, we have sinned. We acted treasonably, aggressively, and slanderously. We have acted brazenly, viciously, and fraudulently. We have acted willfully, scornfully, and obstinately, we have acted perniciously, disdainfully, and erratically. This was only a part. This is a little bit longer, and you can see it on a link that I will post online. When we're saying the Vidui, it's not just to pound on your heart and say, okay, I said, okay, I'm guilty, I did it, yes, no, that's not, that's not the meaning for it. You need to go deep into your thoughts and say, I'm going to change from here, from now on. I'm going to change, I did something wrong, wrong, I betrayed one of my friends, I'm not going to do it again. Repent to it. This is the vidui. It's a time for you to say, you know what, I did it, I was wrong, I'm not going to do it again. Now, God, help me to correct it. You know, confess in Hebrew, vidui, is the same root is also the word for the, the root for the word vada'ut. Vada'ut is certainty. And just like we need to confess, we also need to understand what? 
if you do something wrong and you just confess, imagine someone goes to the court and it just tells the judge, okay, I did something wrong and now you have to forgive me. That's it, right? What? I mean, it doesn't work that way, right? I mean, if you just ask for forgiveness and that's it, the judge says, that's it. You don't need to do anything for that. You don't, you're, you're done. No, but the certainty, when you say it from the bottom of your heart, and you're now saying, okay, I understand. And now I'm switching the pain and the suffering that I caused with mercy and compassion and giving. So I understand and I take responsibility that my action that was caused from my own chaos hurts myself and others. And now I decide that I'm not going to do that again. And instead of that harming behavior, I put love and joy and true happiness and sharing and understanding and compassion and consideration towards other people. Then I have the certainty that the light will come in and will help us to change our future actions and all the negative um, outcomes that were supposed to come to our lives because now we canceled it. We didn't just say sorry, we took from the root all that was causing, you know, negativity and we plant a new plant, a plant of love and compassion and happiness and joy in our souls. And with that, we create a critical mass that helps everyone else. I want to highlight one more thing before we're done. Yes. That before Yom Kippur, uh, on the night before or in the day, in the morning, there is also a tradition, a custom of kaparot. Uh, kaparot is um, to atone um, anything that we want to get rid of. Um, there is a way that uh, people do it with a chicken, that they uh, pay for a chicken. That chicken is being given as tzedakah to um, poor people. Uh, or you can just take money and there's a way to do it that you hold it above your head and you circle it and there's um, a tax that you need to say during that time and you give that money for charity that's called kaparot uh, also it's um, um, very recommended to wear white clothes, clothing on Yom Kippur because you want to be like angels and it's um, very um, important that men will go to the mikveh to go into a pure water and before Yom Kippur, where that's where they wash. And you go to the mikveh, you, you take a shower either at home or in the mikveh itself, and then you go to the water. And of course, to wear white clothing. Um, that's it. We wish you a meaningful Yom Kippur and a happy, happy, sweet, good year. Happy New Year. Shana Tova. Shana Tova.